making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Uh, time to give you an update on how we've got on with our solar configuration and energy consumption in May. As you'll have seen from the introduction, the last couple of months have been absolutely spectacular. Uh, sort of unheard of March and April generation. May, it's been quite similar. It's been a really, really good month. But the key things, there's a couple of key things to take away from this video really, rather than just all of the individual stats. And uh, one of them is what's happening with the garden solar array versus my east facing gable panel, so I'll get to that in a moment. But the other is the hot water heating. If you remember from last month's uh, video, I said I was going to do a test and I've never used the Mixergy tanks, hot water tanks, Smart AI. I've always done it myself, heating with the MyEnergy Eddy solar diverter, using that as the switch and the diverter. And I hadn't ever used the Mixergy system itself for heating the hot water. So in May, I did that as a test and I've seen a good energy reduction. And it's a really good piece of analysis, I think, not, not just because I'm you know, bragging about what I've done, but I found it really interesting to look at it and try to see the difference between what I was doing and my own method of automating the My Energy Eddy using Home Assistant and what the Mixergy tank can do and what the differences are. And it's revealed a couple of things that I found interesting. So I look forward to sharing that with you in a separate video. It never gets old though, does it, to look at your energy stats to see that you've got plenty of energy and you're importing at very cheap prices with Octopus Energy and all of your energy is covered, including with your electric car. You know, that really does never get old. It's every month, it's there's a greater appreciation of what we have here with our solar panels, home storage, battery, electric cars, the electric strategy, and it is costing nothing. We have zero energy bills still, and uh, we're gonna have a, a profit at the end of the year. It's been a nice quiet month in May, not a lot's been going on. We went away for a week's holiday. We've had our driveway replaced uh, while we're away on holiday, so we didn't have to suffer the inconvenience. But there's no new solar panels, no new batteries, not a lot else going on. There is a new robot mower that I'm testing from Emotion, so that'll be coming out soon. Uh, I'm looking forward to that because the one we've got it's just far more useful and I enjoy it far more than I thought we were going to. So I'm looking forward to testing this new one, which supposedly is even better. Anyway, uh, we're not here to talk about robot mowers, we're here to talk about solar and energy consumption. So how have we got on in those stats for the month of May? It's been a good one. Okay, straight on to solar production then. 1,496 kilowatt hours. As I'm sat here editing this video, it's raining outside. Now in May, it only rained here in Norfolk once during the month. And if we look at this chart and we look at how many low sections there are, there are seven. So it's seven days where we had less than 30 kilowatt hours. Can you believe I'm comparing a low day to be less than 30 kilowatt hours? And there was only one day where we actually generated less than 20 kilowatt hours. What's the betting that that was the day it actually rained here? Anyway, um, so averaging 48 kilowatt hours a day is absolutely loads, considering we only probably use 15 to 20 on the average day. So we have had a brilliant amount of solar, exported lots and been paid lots for it. Comparing to previous Mays, we can see that this is the second best May we've had overall. 2020 had higher numbers for both the main 3.9 kilowatt Solus Array and the 2.4 kilowatt Solar Edge Array. They're both better than this Mays at 623 and 355. So yeah, the second best May we've had on record so far, but the best total overall, the 1496 kilowatt hours, because we've got that ground um, array that we've installed last year, so it's the first May we've had those extra numbers, an extra 254 kilowatt hours have generated. This is the best chart that represents how much solar we've had in the last few months. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see that the last three months have generated more solar generation than we've had in any other month previously. The scale of what we've had in March, April and May, comparing that to January and February this year, is just absolutely phenomenal. So that's 623 kilowatt hours for our south facing roof mounted solace inverter 3.9 kilowatts. Our east facing gable panels and three panels south facing over our garage roof that's a solace 2.5 kilowatt inverter that generated 264 kilowatt hours. 
And our latest solar array, the six panels in the garden, uh, that's 2.4 kilowatts on a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. That generated 254 kilowatt hours. And lastly, Solar Edge, again, 2.4 kilowatts, this time eight panels, 300 watts each, south facing on our roof. That was 355 kilowatt hours. Very interesting observation here, though, when we look at the data, so we can compare between April and May, starting on the left at the 3.9 kilowatt array. They're almost identical, 624 in April, 623 in May. We look in the middle there, uh, the 2.4 kilowatt Solar Edge array, 357 versus 355 almost identical but our east facing gable panels with the three on the garage roof that generated more it was 240 kilowatt hours in april 264 in may so the east facing stuff i think has had a bigger impact in may again the sun is rising isn't it so much earlier before five o'clock in the morning and much more into the east more almost northeast at the moment is getting to its peak but my garden solar array Last month generated 278, this month it's down to 254. So the garden solar array is the only array that looks like it's generating a chunk less this month. And I don't really understand why. Is it that the sun is rising more to the east and the leaves are growing bigger on the trees? So I've got more uh, shade occurring in the garden. One month doesn't make a trend, so I'll keep an eye on that and find out why the garden solar panels aren't doing so well right now. Maybe the peak was April for that array. Looking at our solar generation slightly differently here, looking at kilowatts, not kilowatt hours. So the amount of peak power on each individual day, the month starts peaking over 10 kilowatts. But then around the 9th to the 14th, we have a five day period where we must have clear skies. Those graph lines are very smooth. They're not filled in. There isn't noisiness going up and down as clouds go over. So we're generating more kilowatt hours in a day, but less kilowatts as a peak power. Looking across at the 16th, you can see that we're peaking at uh, just over four kilowatts. So clearly a very dull day compared to others. And then at the end of the month, we can see that there's a decline. The last four days, the amount of solar generation peak power is going down. So it looks like the weather is getting cloudier. The one thing I find frustrating with all of these apps and charts and data, etc., is there isn't a single app that allows you to do everything that you want. You have to look at the variety of data and the variety of charts that present the information in the different ways that make sense to you using different apps. If only it was in one place. If only you could have just the data and then choose the graph and the representation that you want. Okay, so added to all that solar power that we had available, we also imported 354 kilowatt hours from the grid. So it's the second month in a row that it's been quite a low amount of import. So our strategy for energy consumption remains the same. Solar energy is mostly exported. What we can't avoid using is the base load of the house. So as we turn something on during the day, that gets consumed from solar energy and any excess gets exported. The red that you can see on this chart is the amount we're importing from the grid. So that's where we're importing, charging our home storage battery, charging our electric car, heating our hot water, doing those things at cheap rate electricity, importing from the grid rather than using solar energy because we're trying to export as much solar energy as possible because we're still being paid 15 pence a kilowatt hour for exporting. It seems such a long time ago that we were trying to self-consume solar energy. It's just much more profitable and easy to export it. The official numbers from Octopus Energy are 1,286 kilowatt hours exported for a credit of £192.99 pence versus the 354 kilowatt hours imported from the grid at a cost of £39.58, including the stand in charge, giving us a very healthy net credit of around £154. Year to date is looking very healthy, 2,495 kilowatt hours imported for £248, 4,315 kilowatt hours exported at £651 building up a healthy credit to pay for next winter. A slightly different chart again, this time showing consumption, uh, red consuming from the grid, yellowy orange consuming from solar, and the blue consuming from battery. Blue is very thin, we're not using the battery very much, uh, and the yellowy orange is more consistent that we're not using very much, it's just the base load, and then the varying amount is what we're importing from the grid. 
I think these consumption graphs really help illustrate that we have a strategy for exporting rather than self-consuming solar. Same sort of graph, but a different perspective this time. This is consumption of our solar energy. So not consumption overall, just what did we do with the solar energy that we generated? This uh, chart coming from the Victron inverter shows 1,522 kilowatt hours generation. It's showing a slightly higher number, but it clearly shows we put most of it, the red, out to the grid, 1,255, and a small amount going into the battery in blue. So... I don't know if you remember from another video that I did, it explained how I'm getting around our export limit. And as we get close to the export limit, I'm starting to charge a home storage battery, which means we avoid that limit and we generate the maximum amount of energy possible. So that's what this blue is. It's us charging the battery to avoid the DNO export limit. And talking of export, this is the chart showing export for the last five years. And as you can see, March, April, May this year, we've exported the most amount of energy because we've generated the most amount of energy and we're trying to export it all. So that's why it all makes sense. So what did we do with all that energy that we imported and generated? The Zappi, the electric car charger, 272 kilowatt hours. The Mixergy heating, so we're heating our hot water with the Mixergy uh, immersion, not using the My Energy Eddy this month, the 58 kilowatt hours for hot water. Uh, kitchen sockets, that's the microwave, the toaster, the hob, the oven, all those sort of things, 44 kilowatt hours. Toshiba air conditioning, just 20 kilowatt hours. Cooling, not heating this month. And the television, just 17 kilowatt hours. The internet hub is next. What's that? 13 kilowatt hours in total. The main induction hob, we have a separate hob that's on the main cooker ring, and that's why it's measured separately. 12 kilowatt hours. And yeah, so some actually some solar charging of the electric car. Nine kilowatt hours uh, of that previous number was from solar charging on the Zappi. I don't do that very often. Our Pylon Tech batteries weren't used very much during the month. Uh, on this chart, you can see we charged to 100% only on 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 days. And the lowest state of charge was uh, just below 70%. So we're not using the battery very much because obviously the solar day is lasting so long. We're running on solar most of the time. And then from midnight to 5.30 in the morning, we're actually running on cheap rate energy. So we're not using the battery very much at all at the moment. So that leaves hot water statistics from Mixergy. So in May, we used 1,343 litres uh, down from April, but a nice lowish number. That's good news. But there's a bit of a problem here because Mixergy says that we only used 37 kilowatt hours of electricity to provide all that hot water. And yet from Home Assistant, it said, what was it, 57, 58 kilowatt hours? So there's a discrepancy and a reasonable sized one. And I'm going to cover that in a separate video when I talk about the comparison of how we used to heat our hot water versus how we do it now. Is my automation with Home Assistant better than Mixergy's smart automation? Again, on hot water, the full percentage, we filled the hot water tank three times. So we did three cleansing cycles in the month of May. Uh, I did that in May because we did three cleansing cycles in April. So I wanted a very clear comparison between April and May. Temperature of our hot water was absolutely fine for the month of May. There was just one period where it dropped down to nearly 25 degrees. We were away on holiday that week, so that's why we allowed it to drop so low. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video with all the statistics and don't forget to share in the comments below how you got on. I do enjoy hearing how you got on with your energy consumption, your new solar installs, the amount you've generated wherever you are in the country or the world. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more energy related videos. Bye for now.